안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. In today's video, we are going to talk about the four most important concepts, the four pillars of object-oriented programming. And those are encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction, and polymorphism. Now, I know those words might sound very intimidating at first, but trust me when I say that the actual concepts behind those scary words are actually very easy to understand. But before you continue watching, make sure you watch the first video I posted about OOP because there I wanted to introduce OOP in a more practical way. I wanted to show you how OOP helps you organize and reason about your code without looking into the theory too much. But in this video, we are going to look into the theory of OOP because that's something that you might need in a coding interview. So let's get started with encapsulation. Encapsulation is the idea of placing data and functions that use the data inside of a container, inside of a capsule. In our case, the capsules are classes. Take this example. Here we have data, which is an Elon Musk object. And we also have a function that calculates his net worth by multiplying his shares with the share price. Because the function and the data are conceptually related, we can improve this code by using encapsulation. With encapsulation, we will put the data and the function inside of a class, making the code look something like this. The advantage now is that the code is more organized and also the functions or methods don't have to take any arguments because they all have access to the data of the class using the this keyword. Using encapsulation, we can also choose what properties of the class we want to expose and which properties we want to keep hidden. In this case, because all the fields of the class are private, no one can access or modify them from the outside. This is why this code won't work. Encapsulation gives us the power to decide how the information about the class should be accessed or modified. So for example, if we want to expose the name of our entrepreneur, we can make a method to do so. All the examples on this video are TypeScript code, by the way. If you know JavaScript, but you don't know TypeScript, please click the link below to learn it for free with me and with subtitles in Hangugo. TypeScript makes JavaScript developers more productive, happier, and less stressed. So if you want to be like that, please click the link below where you will find a TypeScript course. I will see you there. And that's it. That is encapsulation. It is the act of organizing data and functions that use that data inside of classes. And thanks to that, we are able to do data hiding, which allows us to choose which data to expose and which data to hide. Next, we have inheritance. We saw inheritance on the first OOP video that we made, but anyways, we're gonna look at it again. Inheritance allows us to divide our code in smaller classes, in smaller units, and to reuse them. If apart from having an entrepreneur class, we also want to have an actor class, our actor class will also need to have first name and last name, just like the entrepreneur class does. Without inheritance, we will have to create two separate classes with two duplicate first name and last name properties. If we take a look at the code, that doesn't look so good. Using inheritance, since we know that the entrepreneur and the actor classes both need a first name and a last name, we can move those duplicate properties, first name and last name, to another class called person. And then we can say that both entrepreneur and actor both inherit the first name and last name from the person class. We do this by using the extends keyword in TypeScript. The syntax to extend a class changes between languages, but the concept is the same. By extending a class, the child class will inherit or receive all the properties from the parent class. This means that now entrepreneur and person classes both have first and last name properties. And also this means that if we implement the say hi method in the person class, both our entrepreneur and our actor classes will also be able to say hello. Inheritance allows us to divide and conquer. With inheritance, we can divide our classes into small pieces and we can compose them as if they were Lego blocks. Let's now keep going with abstraction. The father of C++ defines abstraction as the act of specifying a general interface hiding implementation details. With that definition and before jumping into the code, let's look at some examples of abstraction in the real world. When you drive a car, you are using an interface to control the car. 
That interface, the steering wheel and the pedals and the buttons, all those things are exposed by the maker of the car. So we can use that interface to communicate with the machine. The car interface hides the implementation details from the driver, which means that you are able to drive the car without actually knowing how the engine works internally. All that is hidden from you. For a code example, let's build our own abstraction. Let's say that we don't like the way we work with arrays in JavaScript. So we want to build our own abstraction on top of them. For this, let's create a class called better array. Better array will have an array inside of it. But instead of exposing the array, we are going to create and expose methods as an interface to interact with the array in a more comfortable way. This class will have methods to get, add, remove, and modify items inside of the array. Now, when someone uses our better array, they just have to use the methods we exposed as an interface to interact with the array. They don't have to know the implementation details of each method. And for example, you don't need to know how index of or filter works. And just like that, we created our own abstraction. We defined a general interface for a better array hiding the implementation details. Another big benefit of using abstraction is that if tomorrow, for example, I change the way modify item method works to make it faster, no one that is using the modify method will have to change anything because even though the implementation change, the interface remains the same. Now to finish this, let's talk about polymorphism. Poly means multiple, like polygon, many sides. And morphos means shape or form, like amorphous, something without a form, or morphology, the study of the shape of the word. So polymorphism, multiple forms, multiple shapes. To understand polymorphism in OOP, we have to remember that with inheritance, all the properties and methods of the parent class go to the child class as well. In this example, both the Hangugin and the Italian classes extend from a person class. This means that objects from the Hangugin class and Italian class both have the method say hi. Polymorphism comes into play when I want my Hangugin class to extend from person, but I want my Hangugin class to change the way it says hi. For this, we would have to write our own say hi method in the Hangugin class. This is called method overriding. We use the same name, say hi, but a different implementation. So now, if we call the say hi method from an object from the Hangugin class, it will say hello in a different way than if we call the say hi method from a member of the Italian class. But that is not all. With polymorphism, the say hi method of the Hangugin class should have the same result as the one in the person class. In the person class, the say hi method returns a string. This means that if the Hangugin class that is extending from person wants to override the say hi method, it can do so, but it should also return a string. If I try to return a number from the say hi method in the Hangugin class, TypeScript will stop me because say hi is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is returning a string. And that is polymorphism in OOP. As you can see, it allows us to override methods from parent classes, but it makes us strict to contracts on how the methods should work. This way, the essence of the class stays the same, even though the shape of the implementation is different. Using polymorphism, we can be sure that both the Hangugin and the Italian classes say hello. They just do it in a different way. And that's it for this video. These have been the four pillars of object-oriented programming, encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction, and polymorphism. If you found this video useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. It's free for you, but it helps me a lot. And don't forget, if you want to learn to code for free with me and subtitles in Hangugo, please click the link below. There you're going to find free JavaScript, Python, Go, React, React Native courses, among many, many other things. Thank you so, so much for watching. Stay free, stay healthy, stay happy. It Gimji. Kamsamida, Sananheyo. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Good